Hi friends, welcome to our flow today. It's gonna to be a slow flow, kind of a mellow flow where we're taking our time with our poses and really feeling the work in them, concentrating on that. We'll have an intention of staying alert and self-controlled of our thoughts in order to cultivate peace and calm in the mind, knowing that if we can be alert of our thoughts, we can choose what we think about. So I hope you enjoy our flow today. As always, grab some water, play some music if you'd like to, and meet me on the mat. Hi friends, let's start our sequence today seated on our mat. So just come on down to an easy cross-legged pose and we wanna find the hip bones so that we're grounded right where the pelvis meets the mat. And then from there, bringing the spine tall and upright, shoulders pulled down, palms can be up or down, whatever you like. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale through the nose. Let's do it again. Have a deep breath in. Exhale completely. And this time, as we have a deep breath in, enjoy that inhale, and then exhale, close the eyes. We'll have a few more breaths at our own pace. Just pausing in your day to notice how you're feeling. Notice how your body feels, your mindset, your mood. All these things matter. In today's practice, we have a focus of calming the mind, bringing peace to the mind. So we want to notice how we're doing before we, before we start. Let's go back to the breath and start to breathe a little more intentionally with the three-part breath. Let's breathe in in a way where we fill the lungs from bottom to top and we exhale completely every time. We can think of it in the three parts. It's like we're breathing into the belly area and then the chest area. all the way up to the collarbones. So just letting yourself find a little rhythm with this three-part breath. And to give you an intention today to go along with our theme of moving the body with a slow flow to bring calm and peace to the mind is actually a verse from the Bible and it's from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and it tells us to be self-controlled and alert. And I find that so helpful because having peace of mind and calming the mind is really about just being alert and mindful, noticing when you're not peaceful. And if we can stay alert and mindful of our thoughts, then we can bring in self-control and try our best to get rid of the harmful thoughts and keep the good ones that are pure and, and true. So today, moving slow for the body and staying alert and using that information to stay self-controlled. Let's bring our hands to prayer pose in front of the heart. We can keep our eyes closed for now, but if that resonates with you, that you have a busy mind today, then all we're trying to do right now is just notice it. Be more mindful of the thoughts that are in our head. Let's start to breathe and move a little bit. On an inhale, reach up through the arms and through the sides of the body. Exhale, flow right back down, make a big circle, come back to your prayer pose. So I'll let you start to match this up to your breath. Inhale as you rise. Exhale, circle back to prayer. And I'd love for you to just go at your own pace. As we start to move the body gently, maybe we can be a little more aware of how we're feeling today, how the body is doing. And then coming back to that intention, self-controlled and alert, staying mindful, staying watchful of your thoughts 
not letting negative thoughts take hold, not letting anxiety spiral out of control, and not entertaining harmful thoughts. Just being alert and mindful. As we're flowing with arms, let's start to just open the eyes. We can keep moving and breathing. And on your next inhale, whenever that is, we lift the arms up and we'll exhale, gently twist to the left, keeping the spine tall and looking over the back shoulder. Inhale, rise back up to neutral. Exhale, twist to the right, doing the same thing. We'll start to flow with the breath with this. Inhaling, rising, exhaling, twisting. We're keeping the spine tall the whole time. We want to start to engage the core a little bit more to help us. And we want this to feel really nice on the spine. All of it, every part of the spine, we want this to feel nice. We want to lose tension, not create it. So if this is causing tension on your lower back right now, try another version where you just Stay in a prayer pose, keeping it low. And you still exhale and turn. But instead of rising up through the arms, we can keep the hands in front of the chest. So play with that a couple more breaths, whichever version you like. Gently bringing range of motion to the spine. We'll have one more per side. Just breathing at a steady pace. On your next inhale, let's rise. Exhale, pull down through the shoulder blades. Try and let go of tension in the upper back area. Inhale, we rise. Exhale, we pull down. Let's do that one more time. Make it count. Reach up. Exhale, pull down. Let go of tension. Relax the arms. Have a deep breath in and out. One more thing we'll do here seated is to just tap your shoulder tops and then make some gentle but big circles in one direction. Giving some love to your shoulder joints. And then let's go the other way with it. On an exhale, relax. And let's turn to head into all fours. So when we get to all fours, we want to plant hands right under the shoulders. They're planted right there into the mat in a sturdy way so that we can rise up through the arms and keep the shoulders active. Then we want our knees hip width apart. On an inhale, let's aim the tailbone up, lift the heart for cow, and then on an exhale, round into cat. On the inhale, come back into cow pose. On the exhale, round in the cat. Start to move at your own pace. Moving really gently today. Slowly flowing through poses so that we can be mindful. Slowly flowing through the poses so that we can concentrate on them. And when we're mindful and present, our mind is naturally calmer. So staying mindful, not just of your body, but of your mind. Let's have one more of each pose. And then easing back to neutral all fours where we'll restabilize the shoulders. Look down and then let's reach the right leg back behind us, flex the right ankle, keep the hips as level as you can. Let's go back to all fours. Let's lift the left leg, reach it back, keep the hips level. Go back to all fours. Start to move with your breath. Inhale, reach the right leg back. Exhale, take it to all fours. Inhale, reach the left leg back. Exhale, all fours. Keep moving. So what we're focusing on here is stability at the hands, stability at the shoulders, and stability at the hips. So we don't want the body to rock side to side. We don't want the hips to tilt. 
We want to keep our core engaged. That'll help. And then last few, if you want to challenge yourself just a little bit more, we have the option to tuck the toes, lift the knees off the ground, and then just keep going like we were. We're still having a focus of shoulder stability, hip stability, core is engaged. We're still breathing steady. We're mindful of the pose that we're in, concentrating. Let's have one more per side, whatever version you're practicing. And then release the knees, take it all the way back to child's pose. When you get to your child's pose, give your wrists a few circles in one direction. And then the other direction. Let's walk our hands away from the body, lengthening through the sides of the body, the arms. And on the next inhale, let's travel forward, finding a kneeling plank, hands right under the shoulders, stabilize those shoulders. And let's tuck the toes and take it to downward facing dog. In downward dog right now, let's bend the knees a good bit. Let's aim the tailbone up and see if we can flatten and lengthen the spine as much as we can. Let's draw the shoulder blades down the back away from the ears and then have a few heel presses, bending one knee, lengthening the opposite leg, stretching the back of the leg gently. And then you're just alternating softly, very gently. We're resting whenever we need to today. On the next inhale, let's come up to the tippy toes. As we exhale, lower the shins and the knees. On the inhale, tilt the tailbone up again, press your heart towards your knees. And then exhale, release the legs and the heels to downward dog again. So we're just working on hip alignment and lengthening the spine with that little flow. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, come up to the tippy toes. Exhale, lower the knees and the shins. Inhale, flatten the back and the tailbone up. And then exhale, release the heels. Let's have a big breath in here and exhale down to the knees, all the way down to your child's pose. When you get to your child's pose, have about three deep breaths. Resting, checking in. Making sure you're not doing too much. Noticing how you're feeling. On the next inhale, let's come back up to all fours. Keep your breath going. And then let's step to a forward fold. Let's place our feet hip width apart and parallel to each other. Let's bend the knees a good bit. Let's come up halfway, hinging from hips, keeping the spine long. Reaching the arms back behind you, palms down into airplane pose. So we're drawing the core in. We're drawing the shoulder blades together. We're reaching out through the crown of the head to lengthen the spine. And we're reaching back through the fingertips, working the triceps. A full body pose here in airplane. Come back to that breath. Make sure that you're breathing in a steady way. Concentrate on the pose, calm the mind. On your next inhale, let's rise up, hinge up, reach up, exhale, take it into prayer pose. When you get to your prayer pose here, just have about three deep breaths, softening the knees, Aiming your tailbone down towards your heels to lengthen your back. And maybe coming back to that intention that we set. Self-controlled and alert. Staying mindful of how you're doing. As we exhale, release the arms. Relax. Step out wide on your mat. 
I'll face this way so you can see my alignment better, but absolutely you stay on your mat. Let's think about drawing the core in. We have a wide stance. We're letting the toes aim out in a natural way. So on the inhale, let's reach up. As we exhale, let's come into a wide-legged squat. We're sending the hips down and back. We're making sure knees point in line with the toes, and we're making sure our knees don't start to jut past our ankles too much. On the inhale, rise up. Keep your spine long. Exhale, come back down into that wide-legged squat. Inhale, we rise up, exhale, we squat. Start to go at your own pace, paying attention to your hips, your low back, your knees. Hopefully your hips are starting to feel really nice right about now. If you had some stiff hips to start off our practice with the day, this is one of my favorite things to feel a little bit better for that. So let's think about making this a little more active. Actively sweeping the arms out and up. Actively coming down, squeeze the legs. When we rise, squeeze your fanny. Exhale, come back down. Let's add to this, if we want to, by hinging from hips a little bit deeper. We come down, we keep the spine about parallel to the floor, and then we sweep back up. Exhale, sweep it down. Inhale, active arms rise. Exhale, active arms both ways, making a big circle with our arms, basically. We're reaching out. We're reaching out as we come up and reaching up. Reaching out as we go down. Let's do it two more times. Checking your breath. Warming the body. This time we inhale and rise. Exhale, come to that prayer pose again. Pause, catch your breath, and then bring your feet back together. We'll come back to mountain pose. So feet hip width apart, parallel to each other. Tailbone aiming down, spine is tall. Let's have a deep breath in and let it go. On the next inhale, rise back up. As we exhale, swan diving down to a forward fold. Let's carefully step back to downward facing dog. Aiming that tailbone up, planting the hands. And once again, we pull the shoulder blades away from the ears. Have a deep breath in and out, downward facing dog. On the next inhale, let's lift the right leg up in the air, bend at the knee, and we're opening that hip toward the right. So we're keeping our shoulders squared. The shoulders don't move. We're just letting the hip open. We're trying to bring that right foot closer to our left shoulder. We're breathing deeply. One more breath. And as we exhale, re-square your hips, hug your knee underneath you toward your nose, and then see if you can step it all the way through in a lunge. If once you get there, look forward, lengthen your spine. Have a deep breath in. Exhale, plant the left hand. And if you have a block, it's pretty handy here to put it right under the left hand. If you don't, that's okay. Just be mindful about how you move. On an inhale, reach the right arm up. Exhale, rotate, find a nice twist here. We wanna keep pressing through the back heel. We wanna keep our spine as long as we can. We're spreading our wings here, reaching in opposite directions. And we're engaging our core. Let's have one more full breath here. And as we exhale, sweep the arm back down. Now let's spiral the left heel down to the floor. We're gonna come up to warrior two. So let's put the right hand on the right thigh and then windmill our way all the way up. We're gonna face our hips toward the long side of the mat and look over the right hand. So we're coming down to our best warrior two. Feet are sturdy. Right outer thigh is engaging to kind of pull the right knee into alignment. We want it to go directly over the toes, point in the same way. We're reaching in opposite directions. 
We're breathing deeply. Mindful of the pose, bringing peace and calm to your mind. On the next inhale, reverse warrior. Let's revolve the right palm up, reach up, maybe even look up if it feels comfortable. And depending on how your spine feels today and your back and your hips, you're welcome to have a little bit of that lateral flexion if it feels nice. Let's have one more breath. And then we'll windmill down. Right hand to the thigh, windmill the left arm all the way back down. We'll take it to downward facing dog, hips aimed up. Have a deep breath. And then have one more. This time on the inhale, lift your left leg up in the air. Bend at the knee. Open the hips to your left side. So again, we keep that left shoulder anchored. We don't want it to get involved. Our shoulders are stabilized the whole time. And we're bringing the left foot closer to the right shoulder. We're breathing steady. And on an exhale, let's re-square the hips. Bring the knee toward your nose, shift into a plank, and then see if you can step forward into a lunge. When you get that foot into your lunge, look forward, press through your back heel. Now again, we can use the block. We can place it right under the right palm. On an inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale, twist. Find a nice, gentle twist here. We want it to feel good, not causing tension. Keep pressing through your back heel. Spread your wings. Deep breathing, paying attention to your breath. Let's match the inhale to the exhale. On the next exhale, let's ease that arm down, heading to warrior two again. So spiral the right heel down, place the left palm on the left thigh, inhale, windmill your way up. We'll bend that front knee, sinking down to our best warrior two. We're squeezing the fanny. <laughs> We're anchoring the feet. We're engaging the left outer thigh to point the knee straight ahead. Steady breathing, matching the inhale to the exhale. Now revolve your left palm up. On an inhale, reach up into reverse warrior. We can look up if it's comfortable. If not, we can just stay looking straight ahead. The back shoulder, the right shoulder just relaxes. And then if we'd like to, we can have a little bit of that lateral flexion. On the next exhale, ease it back to warrior two. Palm to the thigh and windmill your way back down, stepping to downward facing dog. We'll aim the hips up. Stabilize the shoulders, deep breathing. Now, let's step the right foot forward into a lunge and plant the, the back foot, the left foot. So bring it in about a foot. We're heading for warrior one here. So then we'll place hands on the thigh and let's hinge up, taking care of our spine today. Plant your back foot, the left foot, but square your hips forward, straight ahead. Aim the tailbone down. Breathe in as we reach up, and then exhale, bend that front knee. So in warrior one, we're staying super aware of the lower back. We wanna keep that tailbone aiming down so that we don't start to develop tension at the low back. We also wanna keep the hips pointing straight ahead, squared. So stay aware of all these little things in warrior one, making sure that your back feels really nice. Steady breathing, matching the inhale to the exhale in our slow flow today. Stilling the mind, concentrating on the breath. On the exhale, bring your hands down to your hips and hinge from your hips. We'll stop when we're halfway down 
And if you've got a block, again, it's handy in pyramid. We'll put it at the right inner, uh, at the right inner foot. And then we'll start to lengthen the spine more. On an inhale, bring length through the spine, and on an exhale, start to lengthen your right leg. We want to keep the hips squared, so we're pressing the right hip back and the left hip forward. We're never locking the knees in pyramid pose. We're staying really aware and mindful of the knees. Coming back to the breath again, matching the inhale to the exhale. Keeping the spine as straight and strong as you can, trying not to round. We can stay right here if we want to, or we can soften the knee, move the block. We can start to shift into warrior three. So reach your arms behind you in airplane like we did earlier, and then lift off into airplane pose meets warrior three. In warrior three, we're trying to be like a T, a capital T. So we're hinging at hips, we're reaching through the back heel, balancing, trying to keep hips level. Let's breathe one more time and then release to a forward fold. Let your head and neck relax. We'll step back to downward facing dog, planting the palms, reaching the tailbone up. And this time we'll step the left foot forward for warrior one, other side. So look forward, bring the right foot in about a foot, plant it and then hinge up very carefully. When we get up, let's plant that right foot even more, square your hips forward, take a big breath in, reach up, and exhale, bend your left knee. So we're squeezing that right glute, pressing down through the right leg into the right foot. And again, we're staying really aware of the low back, that there's no pressure in the low back. So we're aiming the tailbone down to keep the spine long and not develop that arching right there. And we're also keeping hips squared forward. So for this side, we're constantly having to pull the left hip back and press the right hip forward. Let's have one more steady breath here. Exhale, hands to hips. Mindful of the spine, we start to hinge down into pyramid pose where we'll bring the block back to the left instep. We'll inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, start to lengthen the left leg. So again, staying aware of the knees that we don't lock them. Both feet are engaged. We're bringing nice length to that left hamstring area. Catching our breath, staying mindful of the pose that we don't take it too far. Just focusing on the pose, focusing on the breath, focusing on what you're doing right now. Bringing peace to your mind, bringing calm to your mind. You can stay here if you'd like, or if you'd like warrior three one more time, we'll move the block, we'll bend the left knee, we'll start to shift and lift off into warrior three. So we're trying to level the hips, we're pulling shoulder blades together for this version with airplane, reaching through the fingertips, reaching through the back heel, steady breathing, one more breath in this pose, and then exhaling to forward fold. Letting your head and neck relax. Maybe crossing your arms and gently rocking side to side a couple times. And then gently releasing the hands down and stepping to all fours pose. When we get to all fours, we're actually gonna come on down to a seated place today on the hips. 
with our legs out in front of us. A strong pose for our incline plank. We'll place hands behind us, fingertips pointing towards the body though, about eight inches or so from your hips. It varies depending on your limb length. Let's think about pulling the core in, stabilizing the palms, stabilizing the shoulders. So not sinking into shoulders, but lifting up through them. And then when you're ready, if you want to, we'll point the toes and we'll lift the hips into an incline plank. So we're using the back side of the body to lift off and be here. We can just keep looking forward like I'm doing right now, or we can look up. We just don't wanna let the head and the neck drop behind us. So squeeze your glutes, squeeze your core, steady breathing, mindful of the body, mindful of the breath. We'll have one more breath here and exhale, ease down gently, gently. Good, to a seated place where we'll find the hip bones again like we did at the very beginning on those hip points, placing our feet flat on the floor. So for boat pose today, let's just lightly tap the hands at the hamstrings and then think about awareness of the spine the whole time. We wanna bring length to the spine and we wanna recline a little bit. So from here, let's find the back of the sitting bones, but not the tailbone, big difference. So if we find the tailbone, we start to round and lose alignment, and that can be dangerous to your spine. Instead, keep your spine long and tall, and just find the back of the sitting bones. If you're comfortable and confident here, because this is already a lot of work, then we can start to lift a foot. Maybe you alternate, flowing with that a few times, or maybe you lift both. So we're working the core, hip flexors, back muscles. Let's come back to that steady breath. The inhale matches the exhale. Maybe today we reach forward. Steady breathing. Maybe last little bit, trying to bring your knees a little closer to your chest. And then releasing all the way down. Whew. On the sitting bones, let's find butterfly stretch today. So in our butterfly stretch, I'll face this way. We wanna hold at the ankles, keep the spine tall, shoulders back. Right now we're going for a tall spine. So let's sit up as tall as we can. And then if we can sit up tall enough, let's let one ear float toward the shoulder, stretching the neck gently. Still have that steady breath going. Mindful of our breath, mindful of our body. Letting them calm the mind. Staying alert and self-controlled. Let's inhale, bring the head back up to neutral. Exhale, go the other way. Stretching the other side of the neck. And if we're staying alert with our thoughts, we can notice when anxious ones or negative ones appear. And we can be self-controlled enough to say, not today. On the next inhale, bring the head and neck back up to neutral. Good. We'll come to an easy cross-legged pose stretching out the upper back and shoulder blades before we lie down. Let's bring the left arm up for eagle arms and then kind of wind the right arm underneath. Now, if they can wind around into eagle like this, good for you. But if not, that's okay, we can do a hug instead. They do the same thing, they just look a little different. So choose which version you like better. Maybe close your eyes on an exhale. Paying attention to your breath. Paying attention to your body. On an exhale, let's gently release the arms down and let's bring up the right arm. Wind the left arm underneath, finding eagle or that hug version, whichever one you like. A 
You're still matching the inhale to the exhale for steady breathing. You're still sitting tall. Mindful of body and breath. On the next exhale, release the arms, whatever version you're in. Have any movement that you need to before we head down to the mat for a couple stretches. And then meet me on the mat lying down. We can hold the back of one leg to help us ease down. And when we get down, let's just hug our knees to our chest, letting the back flatten and relax. Let's put hands on the kneecaps and guide our knees together around in small circles, relieving tension at the low back. Going the other way with it. And then gently floating the feet down to the mat. Let's cross our left ankle over our right knee for pigeon pose or a supine version of pigeon. And then if you'd like to, we can hug the right leg toward the chest, holding at the hamstring. So we're stretching through the left hip and glute area. We're relaxing the face. Maybe closing the eyes. Relaxing your back. You're mindful of your breath, keeping it steady and even. On the next exhale, let's release the stretch. Uncross the leg and then do the other side. So this time cross your right ankle over your left knee. And then if you'd like a little more, hug your left leg toward your chest, holding gently at the hamstring. So stretching the right hip and glute area. Again, letting the back just relax, letting the face relax, letting your jaw relax, letting your neck and your throat relax. Steady breathing, letting our heart rate and our breath start to slow down. And on an exhale, relax out of the stretch, uncross the leg. The last thing we'll do is a nice yummy twist at the end of our practice. We'll put arms out in a T. Let's lengthen the right leg and just lay it on the mat. And then let's guide the right hand across the body to the left knee. And then very gently guide your left knee across your body toward your right. So you're letting the left hip come off the mat in this supine twist. Hopefully it feels really nice on your spine. And we're looking over the left hand if it's comfortable. Or you can just keep on looking up, whatever you'd rather do. Having just a couple more deep breaths here. And then gently guiding that left knee back to neutral and putting the foot on the mat. So arms out in a T again. Let's switch legs. Let's bring the left leg long, lying down on the mat. The right knee is up. We'll take the left hand, guide it diagonally across the body to the right knee, and then we'll gently guide the right knee over toward the left, letting the right hip rise off the mat. We want to be mindful of our shoulders. We're trying to keep both shoulder blades on the mat still and just let this happen by moving at the hips. And again, if you want to look over your right hand, this time you can, or you can keep looking up. So mindful of your spine that this is releasing tension and bringing space, not causing tension and bringing compression. <clears throat> One more gentle breath here. And then guiding that right knee back across the body to neutral. 
we'll hug the knees to our chest one more time, letting the back decompress, and then releasing feet to the mat, and maybe lengthening legs on the mat. That's up to you. If it feels better for your low back to have your knees up in the air and your feet on the mat, then stay there. If you'd rather relax with your legs long, then go there. Let's tuck our shoulder blades underneath us, revolve the palms up, take a deep breath in, and as we exhale, close the eyes. So here in our Shavasana, our relaxation pose, just trying to let go of any tension that remains, letting go of any tension that we can let go of, letting the body melt into the mat. We can use our exhales to help us having a breath in and then as we exhale just letting yourself relax a little deeper. You want to relax at the hips and at the shoulders and then a few areas that we hold tension that we don't even realize. Let's relax at the neck and the throat and the jaw and the face. Let's even relax at the outer corners of the eyes and at the forehead. We'll let our breath just become normal. And we'll notice how we're feeling, how the body feels after a slow, mellow flow today. We'll bring up our intention or our affirmation one more time of being aware of our thoughts to cultivate peace and calm in the mind. And coming back to that verse of being self-controlled and alert. That way we can choose what we think about. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you remaining here for a few minutes. Just letting your body relax and letting your mind be still, giving yourself the gift of a little stillness. So this is where I will leave you today. Thank you so much for practicing with me and the light and life in me honors the light and life in you. Namaste.